Let me move on to the five ways that you can create proper wealth. When I say proper wealth, I'm talking minimum seven figures. Okay. Like we're talking a million dollars plus. Okay. And even that isn't a lot of money in today's world. I was talking to some guys in the sauna the other day at the gym and housing where I live right now, a million dollars will get you a townhouse. Okay. Um, housing where I live, they're $2 million houses plus. You're not going to get much for a million dollars. Like you're not really rich anymore. If you have a million bucks here in the GTA anywhere, you know, like in Toronto, um, you need five to $10 million to be properly sorted out minimum, I would say. So the professions that can get you to that, let's go through them one by one is a professional. And we're talking lawyer, doctor, surgeon, engineer, something like that. Not base professional, like you're a school teacher or a professor at a university. You're, you're not going to make that kind of, I'm talking about proper professional, lawyer, doctor, surgeon, um, you know, stuff like that. And in some countries you get paid more than others. Like if you're a doctor or if you're a brain surgeon in Canada, you're going to make a lot less than a brain surgeon in the United States, for example. But generally speaking, if you pursue a career like that, you pay off your student loan debt, or if you get a grant or whatever, you can do quite well in life. Um, you're going to work crazy hours. Um, you're going to take a lot of shit. You're going to be part. I mean, you know, part of some of these jobs over here is that kind of suck now today because of all the wokeness that's infused into a lot of these professions. The next one, number two, to, you know, to create ser uh, serious wealth, C-suite jobs, CEO, CTO, COO, you know, chief executive something, chief technology officer, chief financial officer. Um, guys like this either come from running businesses themselves and having successful e exits, or they work their way up the corporate ladder. Okay. And again, some of these things, there's not a lot of these jobs. You know, some guys would be like, oh, Rich is, his head's in the clouds. There's not a lot of these jobs for people. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Be poor. I don't give a shit. It, it doesn't matter to me. If you want to exclude yourself from being successful and making the money and creating the wealth. And you know, these, these kids that are constantly approaching going like, I want those cars. What do you guys do for a living sort of thing? If you want that shit, you have work to do. I'm just telling you, I don't care if you don't do it or not. It doesn't bother me. Uh, number three, high ticket sales. You're selling private jets, yachts, expensive cars, Rolls Royce, uh, you know, Koenigsegg, Bugatti, stuff like that. Right. Um, high ticket sales, real estate, you know, if you're selling 20, $20 million mansions, like when you're selling high ticket items, you're getting a percentage of that high ticket item. Um, it varies from industry to industry, but you can make some serious money. Um, I know some guys that are in yacht sales that do very, very well. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for a boat to cost 20, 30, 40, 50, a hundred million, 200 million, a billion, like, you know, like you can get up there. You know, really the sky's the limit when it comes to building high-end stuff. And believe it or not, there's a lot of very fucking rich people out there um, that even if they tried to spend their money in their lifetime, they would have a very, very difficult time doing it. So, um, you know, they deploy it on things that they like. If they like yachting, they'll buy a yacht. If they like, you know, if something like a private jet saves them travel, they'll buy a private jet, you know? And don't confuse somebody that owns a private jet with people that just like, lease them for a flight. Very different thing. Um, number four, basically being influential. I put influencer in this category, but in the past it would have been actor, musician, something like that. Like you have an audience, uh, you know, you're a rock star, you're a popular actor, but included in that category today, which I mean, I want to say is basically permissionless. You don't need anybody's permission to be an influencer like these, like there's influencers on social media with millions of followers and they're just chicks that hold up energy drinks, bang energy drinks, some other shit or whatever, but they work on their body and they look good and they've got nice outfits and they have a tan and a good photographer and blah, 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 sort of thing. But, um, you know, influencers, if you're a woman is very easy, it's well, I'm not going to say very easy, but, but it's easier than being a successful influencer with an audience than it is being a man, a guy's got to do different things. We just can't bust out our tits and ass and, you know, get people to follow us. Right. Like we have to, we have to say and do things that, um, are useful, right? Women, on the other hand, they just have to look pretty. Some of them look pretty and say useful things. Less of them say useful things and don't, and don't look pretty. But the point that I'm making number four on this list of items where you can, um, you know, you can chase these things down and make serious money is basically having an audience. Actors have an audience. Musicians have an audience. 
And, you know, the social media influencers today have an audience. Some people would argue that I'm an influencer, but, you know, you get the idea. Yeah, I see Moff's in a chat. He's saying, I got called an influencer today. Very funny. And it, look, you know, um, if, if, if people rely on you, if they look to you for advice, um, you know, for help with whatever it is they're stuck on, they're going to call you whatever they want, but you won't make serious money unless you have a large audience. Um, I'm going to say minimum a million on TikTok or Instagram. Um, YouTube is a different game. You can start to make some serious money on YouTube after hundred thousand quarter million. I mean, I even know some people with under hundred thousand subs that are, that are doing quite well, um, because they figured out how to monetize their audience properly. Uh, but anyway, having reach and, and influence is, is definitely number four. And the last and final one, which happens to be my favorite, which I've used to create my own wealth is entrepreneurship. Um, I will say this, uh, here, let me grab this over here. Cause I'm fucking behind the ball for some reason. I thought I had this ready on my screen, but my, uh, school of entrepreneurship course is opening later on this month. Um, it's not open right now, but I might as well mention it and I'll drop the link in the chat. If you're on my email list, you're, you're already going to get the, uh, notification when it opens up for enrollment, but it'll be in a couple of weeks time. Um, so get on the email, wait list here. And the whole point of the course guys is that it, it removes the mystery, the fog of war when it comes to, um, what the best entrepreneurs do to make serious money. There's two kinds of businesses. I'll explain it in another video closer to when the course launches or elf, elf businesses and half business. But basically there's businesses that are easy to run that make a lot of money. And there's businesses that are harder to run that don't make as much money and will frustrate the shit out of you. Most people choose the latter. The vast majority of guys that will say, oh, I want to choose the path to wealth under entrepreneurship, write my own check, have freedom, whatever the narrative is going in their head, they'll say, I'll go start up a business. But then they go and start up a kind of business that doesn't create money, freedom, happiness, and um, doesn't create havoc in their life. You know, kind of like the, like the chicks with the red flag sort of thing. It's the equivalent of dating a chick with red flags is what most guys do when they start a business. So the whole point of the course is I've taken everything that I've learned over the years washed away the fluff and the bullshit. And I've said, look, this is what the most successful entrepreneurs do when it comes to selecting a business, dealing with like many of the challenges that arise in a business where it comes to human resources, accounting, regulations, uh, insurance, taxes, all that sort of stuff. I did a survey like six, seven months ago, and I asked a bunch of people what they wanted to see in the course. And that's what went in it. I've started to add some new modules. Um, there's currently... I think three extra ones right now. I've got to add a fourth this week. The extra one that I'm going to add is, is going to be telling you exactly how to build an audience. I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly how I build an audience on YouTube um, because number four is basically being an influencer. So the same rules will apply to writing a blog, um, other social media, media platforms like TikTok and Instagram, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. So I'll get into those details later. Um, let me just see what's here in the chat before I... Um, drop the link for you guys to, let me grab the link. Actually, I'll do it right now. Copied. Okay. So I'm going to put this link on, um, the YouTube live stream, uh, on the unplugged alpha. If you guys are listening to the audio or you know, like on a podcast, or if you're watching it somewhere else later as a replay, you should have been on YouTube, uh, come in and ask any question. Boom. So there's a StreamYard link there. Make sure you have a good connection. Um, and be respectful of my time and the other people waiting because there's often quite a few people to try to get through. Uh, all right, what do we got here? So we got a couple of new members. Thanks for joining, supporting the channel, the live chat. Awesome to see people. Uh, Greg says, what's the true definition of a millionaire? Is it liquid or assets after debt value? Look, um, Usually when they weigh somebody's wealth out and they say, you're a millionaire, they basically take their net worth, right? So they take a look at their assets. So housing, investments, all that sort of stuff. You can slice it and dice it different ways, right? I mean, like <clears throat> to place a value on a bit, like, for example, let's use Twitter and, and Elon Musk, right? So Twitter comes along when Elon Musk makes the offer to buy and they say, we want $44 billion or some shit like that. Okay. They start talking back and forth. And then it comes to his attention that a lot of the users are potentially fraudulent bots or, um, you know, like sock puppet accounts for people. One of the things you'll notice on Twitter if you use it is that 
there's a lot of people that don't use their main account. They use these fake sock puppet accounts because all they do is they go on and they fucking blow out, you know, in the comments and they try to create havoc because they're losers. They got nothing else better to do their time, you know, which is again, why I don't read comments on fucking Twitter and stuff like that. So because of the bots and the sock puppet accounts, they came to realize, well, a lot of the accounts look like they're fake. So it doesn't look like it's worth 44 billion because he's basically buying a user base. He's buying the attention of people. So he's like, well, let's let's get to the bottom of this. I'm going to make an offer that's based on what the real users are. And the whole fucking thing falls apart. So the value of somebody's wealth can really go up and down. It can move around a lot depending on how you value and establish businesses, which is how most people determine their net worth, if that makes sense. Um, do, do, evening, T-Smash, Greg. Oh, uh, please define the definition of being a millionaire for the subscribers. Is it net worth in the moment? Is it assets outside of? Yeah, so same question i guess you just did a super chat to get my attention but yeah same thing it's it's your assets right as they're valued and again the value can go up and down like um like i would put the mclaren in my net worth uh 285 might have been the purchase price but in the last year and a half the price has gone up it's worth 350 so it really depends on when you price things it really depends on when you price a business you know um how they're going to price a business there's different metrics, but yeah, so it can go up and down a little bit. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did, consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line. Pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments, there's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code ALPHA10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis, and that gives you a little bit of a discount, and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.